subscribe our channel and press the bell icon. नेक्स्ट प्रोग्राम शुरू होगा 25 ग्यारह से एस एस जेई का फुल कोर्स शुरू होगा रेगुलर बैच शुरू करने जा रहे हैं फॉर इलेक्ट्रिकल मैकेनिकल एंड सिविल तीनों ब्रांच के लिए हम शुरू कर रहे हैं 25 नवंबर से शुरू हो रहा है एपीड एस एस सी जेई का प्रिपरेशन और 25 तारीख से ही हमारा ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम भी शुरू हो रहा है जो इंडस्ट्रियल ट्रेनिंग पार्ट होता है जहाँ पे इंडस्ट्री का पावर प्लांट का टर्बाइन का ऑटोमेशन का पी एल कार्डा इंस्ट्रूमेंट देन मोटर कंट्रोल वी एफ डी एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा जो भी चीज़ है वो सारा चीज़ के ऊपर हम ट्रेनिंग देते हैं और वो ट्रेनिंग लेके आ रहे हैं आपको 25 नवंबर से हाई गाइज वेलकम बैक टू ऑन्टोजेनेसिस ऑटोमेशन क्विक रिव्यू एंड क्विक प्रिपरेशन प्रोग्राम सो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस मोर एम सी की यूज फॉर योर एपीडीसीएल एंड एज वेल एज योर एस एस सी जेई एग्जाम सो फर्स्ट वन एस्पायरिकल कंडक्टर ऑफ रेडियस Four centimeter carrying a charge of fifty-five coulomb. A spherical conductor of radius four centimeter carrying a charge of fifty-five coulomb. What is the electric flux intensity? Electric flux intensity at the center of the conductor. At the center of the conductor, the relative permittivity of the material is zero point five. So it is given that radius is given, charge is given. Your permittivity is given, but see what we want to we need to evaluate. It is electric flux intensity, and where it is a spherical conductor at the center. So spherical conductor at the center, it is always zero. Is that it? Because charges are always in the surface. At the center, it is zero. Anyways. If a dielectric is placed in an electric field, the field strength is. Dielectric is placed in in an electric field, the field strength decreases. The relative permittivity of vacuum is. Relative permittivity, one. Relative permittivity of air or vacuum, it is one. Remember, epsilon is equal to epsilon naught into epsilon r. So relative epsilon by epsilon naught. so this is the absolute permittivity of air or vacuum okay go, uh, if you are not getting this then do watch our previous videos uh, magnets and electrostatic field okay the dielectric strength of air is dielectric strength of air is nothing but 30 kV per mm remember this 30 kV per mm two capacitors of each breakdown voltage 500 volt are connected in parallel the breakdown voltage of the combination will be so two capacitors of each 500 volt breakdown voltage connected in parallel so the combination will have a breakdown voltage of 500 volt because they are connected in parallel so each will experience the same voltage so it will be 500 volt only which capacitor is preferred for high frequency circuit हाई फ्रिक्वेंसी सर्किट इट इज योर माइका कैपेसिटर माइका कैपेसिटर हाई फ्रिक्वेंसी माइका कैपेसिटर लो फ्रिक्वेंसी इलेक्ट्रोलाइटिक कैपेसिटर ओके हाई फ्रिक्वेंसी माइका कैपेसिटर लो फ्रिक्वेंसी इट इज योर इलेक्ट्रोलाइटिक कैपेसिटर एंड योर सिरामिक कैपेसिटर इज ऑफ द रेंज ऑफ योर पिकोफेराइड और माइक्रोफेराइड वन माइक्रोफेराइड मैक्सिमम Air capacitors are used mainly where for your resonant circuits or radio frequency mixtures, etc. Paper capacitors, high voltage and high current application. Mica capacitor is for your high frequency application. This has high precision, high reliability, high stability, and the value is less than your thousand picofarad or something in case of your mica capacitors. Okay, next. For some rating, for same rating, physically smaller capacitor is. For same rating, physically smaller capacitor is. Small size capacitor will be your ceramic capacitor. Okay, so ceramic capacitor is your smaller than your paper capacitor. 
okay next internal heating of capacitors is usually attributed to see heating is due to your resistance so dielectric charge plate vibration electron movement it is your leakage resistance it is your due to your leakage resistance okay next one is the force between the force between two charge is 60 newton if the distance between the charge is doubled the force will be so force is 60 newton and distance so we know force is directly proportional to your q1 q2 by r square so force is inversely proportional to your r square now r is if the distance between the charge is doubled so if r is equal to twice r so it is four times so by four so 60 newton by four it is 15 15 newton got my point okay so f is inversely proportional to your r square so if it is doubled so the force will get be uh, divided by four times the capacitance the capacitance of a capacitor is not affected by capacitance of a capacitor is not affected by area of the plate thickness of the plate distance between the plate and dielectric medium so capacitance depends on area definitely distance between the plate okay and dielectric medium this three it is the thickness so capacitor do not depend on the thickness of the plate because charges are surface property no the resistance of human body resistance of human body is 100 ohm 25 ohm 1000 ohm 10 it is 300 to 1000 ohm actually so it is coming as your 1000 ohm 1 kilowatt hour very important 1 kilowatt hour means 1 unit of electricity so 1 kilowatt hour means 3.6 into 10 to 6 joule 4.8 into 10 to 6 joule and 1 unit of electricity both 1 and 3 so it will be both 1 and 3 number 4 because it, 1 kilowatt hour means 1 unit of electricity and it is nothing but your 3.6 into 10 to 6 joule remember this 3.6 into 10 to 6 joule next one next one is okay guys next is your the unit of reluctance the unit of reluctance is what is the unit of reluctance Weber Weber is flux Henry Henry is permeance it is nothing but your Weber per ampere turn and ampere turn per Weber this is the unit of reluctance and Weber per ampere turn it is permeance next one is your the voltage across 3 microfarad capacitor is the voltage across 3 microfarad capacitor is so there are two capacitors 3 and 6 microfarad and 120 volt is applied so remember the voltage division rule 120 v into uh, c c2 c2 by c1 plus c2 is not it c2 by for your resistances that is r2 by so in series it is c2 by yes so this will be 3 40 it is coming as your 80 volt it is coming as your 80 volt am i right i think so if you remember the voltage division rule and current division rule so what was this the current division rule if there are two resistances r1 and r2 and i current is flowing so if i want to get i1 it will be your i1 is equal to i1 will be equal to what i into here r2 by r2 by r1 plus r2 similarly for two capacitors in parallel if the two capacitors are in parallel then i1 will be equal to your i into c1 plus c1 by c1 plus c2 resistance and inductance behaves like same and capacitors and for similarly for your voltage division rule if two resistances are in series then how we will get the voltage v1 if it is r1 v1 will be equal to your v into r1 by r1 plus r2 and for capacitance the v 
1 will be equal to v into c2 by c1 plus c2. So, remember this formula is very useful formulas. Okay. Next, so the car the curve representing Ohm's law is Ohm's law, parabola, sine function, linear, or anyone. So it is linear. So Ohm's law is linear. Ohm's law valid for your linear and bilateral devices, passive devices, is not it? We have already discussed these things. Two capacitors of each breaking breakdown voltage 200. Breakdown voltage 200 connected in series. The breakdown voltage of the combination is. What will be the uh, breakdown voltage of the combination? See two capacitors now they are connected in series. We are applying 200 volts. So, same capacitance. So, 100 volt, 100 volt. So, it will be 100 volt. So, breakdown will be divided into 2, divided by 2. 1 volt is equal to nothing but it is your 1 volt is 1 volt is joule per Column, joule per column. It is work done per unit charge. Volt means work done per unit charge. An electric field can deflect gamma rays, alpha rays, X rays, neutrons. So it is alpha rays. An electric field can deflect alpha rays. An electrolytic capacitors can be used for DC measurement only. And electrolytic capacitors can be used for your DC circuits only. Okay. So, electrolytic capacitor DC. Two bulbs are marked 100 watt 220 volt and 40 watt 220 volt. So, same voltage rating but 100 watt and 40 watt which has higher resistance. So, see we have to find it out 40 watt and 100 watt. One is your 100 watt both are 220 volts so v is same another one is 40 watts so we know p is equal to nothing but your v into i so if we go in this manner then power is 100 watt by 220 and here it is power is 40 watt by 220 i1 i2 so, we can see that I1 by Q, what we have to find it, we have to find which has higher resistance, higher resistance, okay. So, see from this, if I divide I1 by I2, uh, I1 by I2, I1 by I2, we will get 40 by 100, am I right? I1 by I2, sorry, 100 by 40. 100 by 40. Now, so from this, so 10 I2, or you can say this is 2, this is 5. So 5 I2 is equal to 2 I side 1. Uh, how to get this? Now, if we consider that. Uh, V is equal to I into R. So, which one is getting higher current? Okay, from this we can get this denominator is same. So, current is greater where? I1 is greater than I2. I1 is greater than I2. I2 is smaller. I1 is greater, and we know V is equal to I. Now, voltage is constant. So, if current is higher, R will be smaller. So, if current is smaller, then R will be greater. So, in our in this case, current is smaller in which one? 40 watt. So, 40 watt smaller current, higher resistance. What we have to find? Which one has higher? So, it will be your 40 watt. Okay. Next one. So, what is this? This is uh, very simple that uh, three resistance are connected in delta. Its equivalent resistance in star connection per phase is nothing but your R by 3. How we are getting this? Remember delta to star connect conversion, delta to star conversion. Suppose R1, R2 
and R3, R1, R2, and R3. How we can get this R1? Say this R1, 2, 1, 2, uh, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, and this is a 3, 1. Then how we will get this R1? R1 will be equal to this R1, 2, into your R31 divided by R12 plus R23 plus R31, isn't it? So R31. So here all the, I have same resistance. Same resistance means this will become R square and this will become thrice R. So R, R square. So it is R by three. R by three. Next. So the next one is your in an in an AC circuit. V and I are given by 100. Okay, this is a numerical, so okay, I have to this. Mm. 100 sign, 100 T and 100 sign, 100 T plus pi by 3 milliampere. It is current and it is voltage. So, what is the phase difference? It is your pi by 3. So, cos pi by 3 means cos 60 and cos of pi by 3 means cos 60 is equal to half. Now, what we have to find then the power dissipated in the circuit is power is given by power dissipated I square R or P is equal to V I cos phi. So, cos phi is half. Now, what is V? V can be written as Vm by Vm Im by 2 cos phi. So, what is Vm? Vm is 100, Im, Im is 100. So, it is 100 into 100 by 2 into half cos phi is cos 60. So, it is coming as your 50. 25 so 2500 2500 so it is coming as your uh, 2500 watt 250 now see here it is in milliampere so milliampere means 10 to the power minus 3 so this will be into 10 to the power of minus 3 to 10 to the power of minus 3 so it is 2.5 Am I right? 2.5 what? I think this should be the answer. So guys, do it by your own also. This will be the answer. 2.5 what? Okay. Next, in a parallel RLC circuit, in a parallel RLC circuit, below resonance frequency, the circuit behaves as. So parallel circuit. Uh, Below resonance frequency. Below resonance frequency it is inductive. Below resonance frequency the circuit behaves as inductive. And above resonance frequency capacitive. Is not it? So below resonance frequency, frequency it is inductive and above resonance frequency it is capacitive. Remember this things. Next one is your sorry. Next one is your the electric heater draws 10 ampere from a 230 volt from a 230 volt source the resistance of the heater is so 10 ampere is drawn from 230 volt what will be the resistance it will be 230 by 10 v is equal to i into r so v is equal to i into r so v is 230 10 ampere so it will be 23 ohm 23 Oh, very simple. Next one. A wire has a resistance of 12 ohm. A wire has a resistance of 12 ohm. It is bent in the form of an equilateral triangle. The reference between any two corners. The, oh, sorry, the R effective means effective resistance between two corners of the triangle is. So, see what we are doing. 12 ohm is bent into form of equilateral triangle 
so 12 ohm means 4 ohm 4 ohm 4 ohm okay now what we want to find out any two corners resistance so this resistance is 4 plus 4 this uh, these are in series so 4 plus 4 is 8 and 8 parallel your 4 so uh, 8 plus 4 so it is 32 and 12 uh, uh, 8 by 3 so it is coming as your 8 by 3 okay two wires a and b of the same material but of different length and dia have the radius of r and twice are the ratio of the specific resistance will be so the specific resistance whenever it is mentioned as specific resistance the dimension or uh, doesn't have any role so it will be one is to one because specific resistance depends only on the nature of the material and the temperature of the material the relationship is true that relationship is true m is equal to l1 l2 l is greater than l1 plus l2 no l is less than equal to l1 l2 and m is greater than L1, L2. So, mutual inductance is always less than or equal to your the product of the self inductance, isn't it? L1 is 0.2 Henry, L2 is 0.8 Henry, K is equal to 0.8, then M is equal to. So, mutual, we know the, that relations K is equal to your M by root over of L1, L2. Am I right? So, you just put the value, put the value here 0.8 m and this is your 0 0.2 into 0 0.8 so it is coming as your we can write m is equal to 0 0.8 into uh, this will be 0 0.8 and 0 0.2 no 16 so 0 0.16 so root over of 0 0.16 is nothing but uh, it is your 4 and so 0.4 it will be 4 square 0.4 square so 0.4 so it will be 0 0.4 0 0.8 0 0.4 0 0.8 into 0 0.4 3 3.32 so this will be your 0 0.32 handy Point three two, and so next one is your dash is natural magnet. Natural magnet, alnico, alnico is not uh, natural magnet. Phosphor bronze, magnetite, limestone. It is magnetite. Magnetite is your natural magnet. It is artificial. Alnico is artificial permanent magnet. No, uh, dash is paramagnetic material. So, paramagnetic material, oxygen is paramagnetic material. Air is diamagnetic material, oxygen is paramagnetic material. Susceptibility K of diamagnetic material. Susceptibility of diamagnetic material is negative. Paramagnetic, paramagnetic, which is positive. Susceptibility is negative for diamagnetic material. Okay, guys. So, we will be solving more MCQs like this. So, till that... Bye bye. Wish you all the very best for your exams and whatever you want, kindly do comment or give us feedback and we will come more valuable, valuable videos for you people. So, till that, bye bye. स्पाइरल टाइप का बर्डन टीव होगा दिस इज द बर्डन टीव यहां पे देखो ये फिक्स है हम पढ़ते आए हैं कि फिक्स एंड फिक्स एंड तो ये हो गया तुम्हारा प्रेशर गोस